Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Michael McCarville. This is Fun with Fallen Flags, episode 71. So we're going to continue on with the Ofer Loop series, and we're going to build the outhouse. Now the outhouse uh, sits on the uh, platform for the depot, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and capture it as it would have looked in the uh, 1940s or so, early 1940s. Uh, and then let's go ahead and jump into the kit. Um, I want to thank uh, Bantle Model Works for allowing us to use the uh, kits that we are featuring as we build these out in the scene. And I also want to thank the Friends of Cumbersome Toltec for the um, historical photos so we can put everything in kind of a historical context. For example, the photo there at the top, all the stuff that you saw in part one for the series, uh, for the overview, or any of the other series have been super helpful. Um, I also want to thank uh, everybody who's joined the Facebook group, HO Scale Tutorials, and the uh, uh, YouTube group as well. Uh, all that information is going to be down in the notes below. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the kit. So let's talk about the, uh, the components here. So that sort of tannish orange piece of material that's sitting diagonally, that's actually the shingles. You can cut those up, they're thin paper shingles and uh, in strips. We're going to lay those down on top of the roof material. And then the uh, instructions, uh, typical uh, Banta kit, uh, lots, of, lots of instructions in detail of um, exploded uh, views of what the structure looks like, as well as a, a parts diagram of uh, explanation of what some of the uh, parts are. But for this kit, there's not much. So uh, you can see four walls at the top. We're going to glue those together, paint them yellow. And uh, we're going to paint the uh, 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 door panels that it's on the uh, next uh, part sheet down. There's a three door, or I'm sorry, two door panels on there. We're going to take those off and paint those yellow as well at the same time we do the main body. And then everything else on that sheet, I'm going to leave on, paint it brown. Uh, the uh, piece on the lower left there, that uh, slightly longer piece of basswood, that is going to get an alcohol and uh, any ink treatment. We're going to do a 10 to 1 uh, alcohol to India ink uh, uh, wash on that. And probably just a single wash because all I want to go for is just a kind of a, a faded wood look on that. And then the other square in the lower right, that is actually the cardboard piece of the roof. We're going to bend it in the center and uh, then we're going to shingle it and then put it on top. So early 1940s is what we're going for. Um, I do want to mention that on this structure, I did change the uh, paints that I'm using slightly. I'm still using the Star Brand paints because I do like them. They're really thick, so they need to be thinned as you're using them. But I decided to change it because on the when I did the section house, I, it, got, it got real yellow looking, and I like it. It looks like it's been maintained a little bit more than the buildings around it, which I was going for. But on these, on these buildings in the Ofer Loop area, I was wanting to get a little quite, um, not quite as, as bad of a, a yellow look, uh, school busy kind of look. And uh, I wanted to go for a little bit more of a faded look. So what I did is I did a 50-50 mix of Denver Rio Grande Western Depot buff. And it's kind of a similar yellow like that, but then I mixed it uh, with a Denver Rio Grande Western Jersey cream. So the two colors for star brands on that is STR09 and STR32. So those are the two colors that I mixed 50-50 and I like the color that came out. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot more toned down, but it still is very similar to the color that we're using. Uh, and then same old STR 33 Denver Rio Grande Western star brand paints uh, trim brown for all the trim. If you paint it by brush, you'll notice that it goes on a lot thicker if you don't thin it. And you'll notice that it tends to be just a little bit darker. If you uh, airbrush it, I use an Iwata airbrush. And I, uh, as I spray it, not only does it save you a lot of paint, because it, you can put a nice thin layer down, especially if you want to chip it off and wear after that. Um, but it also tends to give it like just a, a shade lighter too. So that looks good. And then we'll use uh, chalk powders and dull coat 
um, on top of that uh, as we go forward. Um, again, notes in the bottom, but uh, if you want to join the tutorials group, the, cha the YouTube channel, check out any of the, uh, the two vendors, the photos and the, the model uh, for the laser cut uh, wood kit. Uh, all that's going to be in the notes. Um, let's go ahead and jump ahead. So what we see here is we have the um, depot platform with the outhouse sitting on top of it. You'll also notice that you can see it. And that indicates that the tramway hasn't been put in yet. Also, you see the platform is completely covered with horses and pack mules waiting to load all their stuff onto the boxcars. That easily has to be one of the stinky places in southwestern Colorado. <laughs> so I don't know how bad you got to go, but man, you really got to go if you're out there on that platform. Um, so we're going to paint our uh, outhouse. We're not going to paint it that brown color. You also notice that it looks like the depot is painted a really, really dark brown. Uh, we saw some of that in Vance Junction as well. So this is a very early, early Rio Grande Southern photo. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the structure to match a typical uh, Denver or Denver Rio Grande Western and Rio Grande Southern yellow brown trim brown doors. The kit actually shows the doors with kind of a solid brown on it, and I don't understand. They must have found some photos like that, but I haven't seen any. Um, but also, it, the doors are built up in three pieces. So we want to accent that lowest panel. We're going to paint that one separate. We're going to paint that one yellow, brown trim on top of it, and then the door frame around it's going to be brown. So we're going to, it's going to look a lot more attractive. So let's jump ahead. Okay, so as we start, you'll notice that I have actually a framing square that I have taped down to the desktop, and then I have a plastic uh, drafting uh, triangle that I use. And I use these constantly to square everything up as the glue is drying. Since I use tight bond on basswood, the stuff dries pretty fast. And what you'll notice is that uh, you're able to kind of adjust things as it's drying. And then after a couple of minutes, uh, it's pretty much set up. So you don't you can kind of constantly build, cut new pieces out, file them, be attaching them constantly while you're uh, letting the last piece set up. So. Um, as we go through this, uh, we'll go through and we'll, I'll show you kind of some tips and tricks and things that I, I use, but I like to mention that because some people use big metal sheets and uh, metal blocks and things that square everything up, which is nice. I just try to keep the desktop as clear as possible so I can continue to work on whatever I happen to be working on. So I may, I may get something else like that. That, that would be a, a nice improvement, but um, at this point, I'm not sure that's something that I really need to do. So moving on, um, again, just constantly moving things around. Uh, the other thing is I heavily reinforce the corners and any piece that happens to be, that it isn't going to be seen. So you can see there's a nice little bead of glue that runs down the interior corner there. Um, that's probably the first of about three that I did. This thing's going to be really strong when I'm done, and not for any reason, because it, it can probably survive just the initial gluing. But I just don't want to have to face ever having to touch this again as far as, you know, if there's a derailment and it <laughs> wipes out the outhouse or whatever, I'm not going to worry about that. So um, so now we have the three sides glued on. Let's go to the next step. And you can see the doorway. That's glued in. Now the doorway actually has some little, it, it sits, sits down a little bit, there's some little pegs on the bottom and that's meant to kind of mesh down into the platform. There's also a little uh, peg that you can't really quite see. Uh, it's a lot like in the center of this doorway that's on the back side and that also goes down into the uh, platform. Now. What you see here is the platform with those two little uh, slots in the very center. Uh, those are, uh, the, the outhouse sits on top of that. Um, I've washed the whole thing with India ink. Initially, I was going to paint this with the original paint that I used to paint, paint the section house. But 
what I ended up doing is I ended up coming up with a different mixture that I liked better. So this thing got the India ink wash, then it got coated with hairspray, then it got the first yellow, then it got the second yellow. And at that point I decided I was not going to do any weathering by chipping paint off of it like I've done on the Vance Junction series because I didn't want the lighter yellow to come off, expose the, the more bright yellow underneath it. I didn't even want to mess with that. So I said, okay, on the next building, I'll do it differently. But on this building, um, I'm not going to use the, I'm not going to expose the India ink underneath. Now in the Vance Junction series, I did that and they look great. But on this, I'm just going to weather it differently. So moving on, after I decided that I wanted to paint it, I went ahead and painted the outside and the doors at the same time. Now that's everything that's going to get the yellow. So once that's painted, then I can start uh, working on the brown. Now the brown, like I said, I painted all of the pieces on the um, on the sprue on the, sh the wood sheet that was laser cut and then I cut those out when they were done. Now a little trick you can do is if you're going to paint everything brown and you cut everything out after you've painted it, there's going to be those little separation points that you cut the, for example, the doorway frame, you're going to cut it off that sheet. As you cut it, you're going to obviously expose the brown. I have a permanent marker that is black and brown. And what I, what I do is as I'm cutting things off of the sprue and I, and I shape them and I file them so that they're flat, you can either take some paint and then go back and touch up all those pieces or I have a permanent marker that's brown. I just dot right where that little separation mark is and it's the exact same color so you don't even notice it. And it just, it, it does the same thing as painting, it just speeds it up. So for me, it's easier. If you want to go through and paint, then, you know, by all means, that's an option too. Uh, once we start thinking about the roof, uh, we want to go ahead and, and paint the underside of that cardboard because as you look underneath the uh, edges of it on the, on, on the underside of the roof, you're going to be able to see that exposed cardboard. So that's a good time to, as you're painting the brown, uh, you can paint the underside of that roof as well. Uh, you can see that uh, all of these things are peel and stick windows and doors um, and frame pieces too, as a matter of fact. So I didn't have to glue any of the brown pieces on. All I did was just peel a layer off of the, for example, the yellow uh, the door. And again, this doesn't match the instructions. I did this to match the other prototype photos that I've seen. So what you see here is the, uh, the yellow panel with the uh, frame, the square rectangular with the cross in the center, the brown piece on top of that, the door frame adhesive piece goes over that, so there's three pieces, and then that whole thing gets, glue, gets, gets um, pressed into the door frame. It's a very snug fit. And there's a little bit of adhesive around the edge of the door frame and that's what holds the door in place and if you push a little too hard on it you can push it in so rather than deal with that in the future um, I went and took a, a bead of glue and glued on the inside uh, of the door of the wall uh, a good bead of glue around it so that that door is you know on there it's not going to come off and the windows are actually two pieces. There's the frame and then there's the slats. So they're adhesive and you glue, and you uh, press those together and uh, press those against the wall. And then I took a very, very small amount of glue and then added some more strength to that around that as well. Uh, is it needed? Depends on how much handling it's gonna get. If it's not gonna get any handling, you don't need to do that at all. However, again, I don't know what's gonna happen. Derailment, fat fingers, you know, someday when I get old and I can't see very well, you know, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, grab it by accident. So rather than deal with that in the future, a little extra glue now doesn't hurt. Now's the time to do it. Um, okay, so let's talk about the roof. So the roof is essentially that piece of cardboard, and it has a, a small cut down the center, which shows you where the center is, and that's the fold mark. So you just fold it. 
Uh, however, a lot of the Bantam and Model Works kits have uh, laser markings or, or whatever, um, so that it tell it shows you the rows and it marks out the rows, or at least some guidelines on how to uh, put the uh, shingle material down. This one didn't have any, so I just drew some out with the triangle and square and just made sure that it was straight. Now I switch, I switch shingles. These shingles actually came from an earlier kit. These were left over from the Vance Junction uh, section house, and I decided I was going to use these. The other ones actually look a little more uh, ragged and look a little more like wood shingles would probably look better, whatever you happen to have. Um, I decided I was going to use these and just see how they came out. If you don't like it, put another layer of shingles over the top. And that's how it's going to get re-roofed anyway. So anyway, um, started shingling this and then finished. And this is what the shingle roof looks like. Now that very top piece, that crest, shingle up as close to the top as you can get. And then... Um, all I did was take a little bit extra of the edge material on the shingle platform. That little crest piece is just, I just took a, a straight edge and I folded it down the center after I got the width I liked, tested it, make sure it looks good, and then just glued it on. Um, one other thing you'll notice is since this is a piece of cardboard and it's a very small roof, but I wanted to make sure this has a little extra strength, um, you'll notice that from the peaks of the, of the front wall and back wall, I actually glued a, a 12 by 12 inch um, scale, 12 inch HO scale uh, board that runs down the center. And what that did is two things. Number one is it gives it a little more strength that when I glue the roof on top of it. But the front wall, when I uh, kept staining it and painting it and stuff, it started to curl a little bit. Well, there's normally when you assemble the walls together, uh, what you'll find is that the walls will go back to the normal shape because you'll glue them in place and kind of, you know, clamp them, let them dry, and then any of the, you know, the curved edges are going to cinch up because they're going those those um, laser cut edges are going to jigsaw puzzle together. It's not a big deal. On the top of those those peaks, there's nothing to keep it in place. So what I did was I took that that uh, piece of material and then I glued it and then I clamped it so when it dried the walls were straight again so just a little thing and I've started doing that on all the uh, all of the kits that I'm working on if it looks like there's just a piece of material that just goes over the top I'll put something down the ridge line anyway because it gives me just another bit of gluing surface and on this kit that's actually pretty substantial so even if the sides of the roof uh, you know, just get glued on a little bit, that ridge line, that's going to be rock solid when I'm done. Before you do this, you want to make sure you're done on the inside because there's no turn back. Um, I've glued the base in place and the walls to it and that ridge line piece. And then before I glued the roof on, I went ahead and again glued all of the inside seams with even more glue this thing's really, really strong, and I know it's overkill, but I like overkill. <laughs> I like it to actually be that strong. So also, while that glue's drying, gives us a chance to weather the roof. So for the roof, what I did was I just took some craft paint, and I painted it the same color as I did the section house. And it's just a cheap bottle of craft paint. And um, it, it's a, a color that I like, but you'll also notice that this roof, roof is filthy. It is, it is really badly stained. Um, part of that is because it sits underneath the tramway. And what you'll see is, let me show you a shot of the tramway so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. That's tiny. All right. So you'll notice that on this roof, the uh, roof front edge, it's got this stain, almost like the edge of the corrugated metal up above uh, when it rains or, or uh, any of the dirt or soot or debris from inside comes down. It looks like it hits that one line. So what we want to do is we want to recreate that. So that's what we've done by making this thing filthy. And that's what you have. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and slap the roof on, 
and that's pretty much it for this kit. Um, we don't really have much else to do other than find a good place to put it until it goes on the layout. So um, we've set, we've shown the overview, we've shown the outhouse that sits at the end of the depot platform, and what we're going to do next is we're going to build the other half of this kit. And by the way, I forgot to mention this kit is BMW 101 HO. Um, we're going to build the section house, which sits on the other side, um, down the tracks, towards the north of the uh, uh, Rio Grande Southern line, and that's the uh, section car shed. Um, that one actually, the friends of Cumbers and Toltec uh, uh, showed me a, uh, some really cool photos, including one of them, the, the, a rarely f uh, shown scene of the front of it, which uh, really helped out a lot. So one other little trick to this model as you're gluing the boards together, and you can even see this if you look at the instructions for the Banta kit, where the two boards on the corners uh, glue, to, glue together in a joint, sometimes that joint isn't quite perfect, and you're not sure if you should have the two boards touch, or you should back them off just a little bit so that you, ex so you don't expose the laser cut seams of the two um, jigsaw puzzle wall sections going together. Here's a trick. When you're doing that, go ahead and cover the laser cut seams, but on the very corner of the wall where you where you know that you're going to see the yellow underneath where the two boards have a little bit of a gap. If you know that's going to happen, and it probably will, so good idea to just start doing this, is where the two walls meet, go ahead and paint that very corner whatever your trim color is like brown and you'll notice on this corner what we're looking at you can't see any yellow but those boards aren't touching and if I hadn't done that you'd see a board a board and then you'd see yellow down the center like the two boards actually weren't touching and they should so you it's okay to back them off just a little bit and cover those those joints for the laser cut walls but it hides the missing um, that yellow gap that runs down the center looks great and right now what you're looking at is you can see it's uh, two boards that aren't really touching and it's a little darker underneath um, and just an easy easy little fix especially if the boards that you're using for trim don't quite match up so that's all I have for this one I know this was a really simplistic project but I want to show you some of the stuff that uh, you can do and some little caveats to the kit and some little uh, ideas on how to work around some of the problems. So that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. And the next one is the section car shed. So we're going to jump right into that one.